of the United Nations and also bringing together such a large group of countries and organizations. Before this conference, I have participated in the special conference of Shanghai Cooperation Organization on Afghanistan in Moscow. And the conclusions of this conference uh, should also be taken into consideration in our common efforts for the good of Afghanistan. On the other hand, Turkey welcomes and supports the vision brought about by the new United States strategy on Afghanistan and Pakistan. And we commend the leadership of President Obama and Secretary Clinton for this new strategy. Ladies and gentlemen, we are happy to see that the approach of the international community on Afghanistan is being refocused. We have been always advocating all along that military means is important, but not enough. The civilian efforts in the political, diplomatic, economic, and social fields are imperative. While Afghanistan develops its army and police, ultimately, the solution for Afghanistan has to be a political solution. All efforts in these fields should focus on supporting Afghan-owned solutions. Ultimately, it is the government and people of Afghanistan that have to find lasting solutions and live with them. The international community can merely support these efforts. Lasting solutions will inevitably have to include the vast majority of the Afghan population across various segments. This is especially relevant, bearing in mind the elections to take place this year and also next year. In the security field, training and equipment support for the Afghan National Army and Afghan National Police is critical. A coordinated new effort is required. This will enable them to fully assume the responsibility of protecting and serving the civilian population. Turkey will stand ready to increase her contributions for the training aspects of such a collective effort. A similar training and equipment program is also essential for the civil service to fulfill their functions. This is especially true at the provincial and district levels. We have initiated work in this regard with the relevant Afghan authorities already. However, the priority should be a well-coordinated major economic development program. Such a program should focus on improving the agriculture sector and building the capacity of the private sector. A major drive in the education sector should complement this so that the future workforce of a sustainable economy can be prepared. Turkey is ready to play a leading role in the education sphere. Progress should spread soon even into the most remote areas that will be very important to win the hearts and the minds of the Afghan people. The security problems in Afghanistan are affecting other regional countries and vice versa. This requires a strengthened regional approach. In this regard, international support for Pakistan's efforts to curb terrorist activities on soil is also essential. With the regional approach in mind, Turkey initiated the trilateral summits together with Afghanistan and Pakistan. The summits have three pillars, dialogue, security, and development. The trilateral summit in Istanbul last December focused primarily on development projects. We will hold the next summit in Ankara tomorrow. This time, the focus will be on regional security. Together with Presidents Karzai, Zardari, and Gül, the top military and intelligence officials of the three countries will also attend this summit. The last point I would like to make is a call on the United Nations. The United Nations capabilities and personnel in the field throughout Afghanistan needs to be beefed up. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. I, I made a gentle appeal for um, sticking to three minutes. This is not aimed particularly at the next speaker, uh, but to all of you. Uh, Minister of State, uh, Lord Marek Brown, you have the floor. <coughs> well, thank you, Kai. And as an old UN colleague, I will honor your, uh, your instruction. Um, may I extend my thanks, too, to the Netherlands for hosting this meeting and to the UN and the government of Afghanistan for co-chairing our discussions. I think we, the whole international community, have an important stake, as we all know, in Afghanistan's future. It's been very eloquently said by a number of speakers. 
and many of the countries here today, including my own, share the scars of terrorist atrocities, which serve as a stark reminder of the collective interest we all have in ending terrorist activity from within and beyond Afghanistan's borders. I join those who warmly welcome the new strategy for Afghanistan and Pakistan laid out by Secretary of State Clinton uh, this morning. It recognizes the interdependence of the border area and sets out clearly the need for the international community to refocus and reinvigorate our efforts. The UK fully supports the recognition that all of Afghanistan's neighbors have an important role to play in building a more stable Afghanistan. We all need to think carefully about how to implement the regional aspects of this strategy, and of course, not least in, in Pakistan. 2009 is a, is a critical year for Afghanistan. The forthcoming presidential and provincial elections provide a renewed opportunity for the people of Afghanistan to, to renew the country's political life and allows them to, uh, through the elections, find a viable way forward. It's vital, therefore, that the international community offer the government of Afghanistan and the UN, who are playing a key role in coordinating the elections, the practical support they need to provide the necessary security so that as many people as possible are able to vote. The UK has committed $25 million for the electoral process. I hope that other international con partners can contribute further. We need, too, to redouble our efforts to help Afghanistan tackle the security channels, ch challenges it faces, embed sound governance and justice, expand economic development opportunities which offer real alternatives to opium, and build vital infrastructure, including transport networks, to link Afghanistan to its neighbors and the wider world. It's already been observed that there has been considerable progress in building up the Afghan security for forces through extensive training and mentoring programs. But security alone is not sufficient for a lasting peace. So I welcome, too, the emphasis in the U.S. strategy on building governance and strengthening the rule of law, which will generate confidence in the Afghan state. And let me add here that the U.K. has also appointed our own special envoy, Sir Sherard Cooper coles uh, by hope so that he can work with his colleagues to ensure a more seamless support to Afghanistan. Uh, we too agree that there must be expanded civilian expertise uh, across the country to help Afghan institutions reach out uh, across all parts of the nation to help the people of the country. And we announced a 50 million pound increase in our support to the Afghanistan National Development Strategy, making a total of 500 million pound, 510 million pounds over the next four years. We also, in 2008, doubled our civilian presence in our integrated civil military mission in Helmand. Uh, let me close by saying that we firmly remain committed to working with our international partners, with the government of Afghanistan, and with Afghans' friends and neighbors to set Afghanistan on a path to long-term stability and prosperity. Thank you very much, uh, Lord Malik Brown. We're not quite at three minutes yet, but we're getting close.